We're going to turn and talk about the WASH working group next, if that's all right, uh, Narula. Um, so I think, you know, one of the interesting things with the WASH working group is sort of bringing together the WASH working group and the health sector um, together. And, you know, this is a critical condition for long-term cholera control. And we're curious to hear what are you observing um, at the, the national and at the hotspot level. Are you seeing evidence of intersector, intersectoral coordination alignment? Yeah, thank you very much. I think um, uh, this has been in uh, um, discussion for a long time, uh, particularly when uh, WASH has a bigger role to play, particularly to prevent cholera to happen and manage over the large population. So uh, WASH has a big role and also the integration with larger healthcare, the health service, health delivery, um, partly case management, all these things are very much related with uh, WASH component. So if I uh, dissect the WASH word like water, sanitation and hygiene, I will focus on hygiene part. Hygiene actually means the uh, behavior change. So we had that experience during the COVID period like uh, uh, making people aware on the uh, safe distance or social uh, distancing or mask use or hand washing. So it was quite difficult and particularly with the uh, use of uh, safe water, ensuring safe water access, safe sanitation practice and also the hand washing practice. So all these are very much relevant with the uh, behavior change attitude and also these are very much linked with the uh, broader healthcare. So in, in the hospital, when you visit a, a public hospital in a developing country, you will see the maternal child health ward, not that very hygienic, the toilets are not that very usable, so many problems are there. But if you improve the condition of wash, then you have the scope of uh, making people prevent from the cholera happening. And also all these things really contribute to the larger infection prevention control. So that again we observed during the corona period. like. Uh, when we talk about infection uh, prevention control, when we talk about the uh, due management of medical waste uh, uh, products, so all these really link with the uh, cholera prevention. So WASH actually has a bigger umbrella like thing that has very much good linkage with the healthcare service delivery, yeah, people awareness, people good practice yes, and, and also, also the uh, behavior change adoption and uh, taking it into the lifestyle. So that way uh, water, uh, water sanitation and hygiene has a bigger role and also can influence and impact on the health service delivery in the like uh, broader, larger uh, environment. Thanks. And can I ask a follow-up question to that? Um, you mentioned um, that with COVID that we were seeing, um, you know, some efforts on messages and, and um, sort of changing some practices with hand washing. And I'm just curious, your observations now when you're going around, are you, have, are you seeing sort of changes in behavior amongst health workers or people um, in facilities, um, more hand washing stations and what's, What's uh, what's yeah. going on? What's the trend? Um, if I uh, give uh, no, non scientifically, it's fine. Just yeah, your observations. More, more, <laughs> more of these are like observational. Yeah. From what I read, actually, we tried to make some study in the field in Bangladesh in hospital setting. During the uh, COVID outbreak, you are very much aware of the different phases of COVID: first wave, second wave, third wave, like thing. So in Bangladesh, the second wave was very fatal. So that was the del Delta variant and lot of issues of access issue, service issue, availability of um, drugs, seats in the ICU, so many things were there. So people really saw the impact of COVID, the risk of COVID. So they remain very much uh, careful in the hospital, in the hospital entry, in the hospital and, and also in the community. So we, uh, from our very small sample size survey, we saw that the hand washing practice even gone up like uh, three, uh, 30, 30 times uh, within the community and also in the hospital like uh, caregiver and also the attendant level even. But when the second wave is gone and there was kind of a, a lag period of uh, very uh, COVID um, comfort zone and then people really started uh, non-practicing those hand hygiene and also the mask uh, uses. So you understand that these are very uh, essential behavior change issues 
that requires lot of uh, practice lot of motivation lot of information and also finally it's a system health system issue so if you don't have the um, uh, uh, like hand hygiene option in the entry uh, in the hospital that most of the hospitals i'm sure in globally all of the hospitals really try to make at least a um, uh, hand hygiene option in the hand uh, water supply running water hand washing basins but finally after the second or third wave in many countries the practice is not there in that way so uh, these are the important thing that need really to be very sustainable and constructive planning to make how we really can make the uh, behavior change of the people uh, maybe it see it may seem like hand washing is very simple thing or maybe that uh, it, how it really con contributes to the uh, disease happening or in the uh, um, like macro perspective but really it matters for example when uh, isa was t uh, talking about the amr antimicrobial resistance so actually it has lot connection with the uh, preventive approaches for example we have if we have the good uh, wash practice hygiene practice it actually prevents the uh, unnecessary use of antibiotic as well so it has a broader health perspective broader health system delivery and i again say it's a health system issue so in that way i think uh, wash has a good uh, contrib contribution in the overall cholera prevention and maybe not only vaccine but also case management and also uh, the wash improvement that should be our motto within uh, like the community development and the healthcare service development thanks brilliant 